Hey, I'm Richard. Welcome to Contra Thoughts, and we are going to be looking at some fun, interesting things coming up next. All right. Hello there. Welcome. Got some Peruvian coffee again. Delicious. First and foremost, I want to say thank you again for uh, subbing. You've, you've made me a very happy dude. No, seriously, though. Um, I'm seven away, as I record this, seven away from 100 subs. Now, I know some people have like 4 million and, you know, 250,000 and 15,000. Um, I'm truly thankful because I can actually, it's smaller, um, and I can engage with everybody. If you leave a comment, I'll respond to it. You got a question or, or concern or want me to cover something, uh, I'm about 99% sure I'm going to talk, talk to you about it. So uh, that's the cool thing about being smaller. Now, uh, the goal is obviously more <laughs> and proclaiming the gospel and having a biblical worldview, Christ-centered worldview, and so on. And the more people that are on board with that, the more of you can then share this content and other YouTubers, not just me, of course, not just my ideas. These are ancient ideas as old as time. Um, but nevertheless, they are something that imbibe, I hope, a biblical worldview that's first and foremost based on the scripture, <clears throat> not your lived experience, not your idea of truth, not your reality or something else, uh, but what the scripture has to say, because the Bible is sufficient. The Bible is inerrant. It is infallible. And if it's not any of those things, then just kind of throw it away altogether and just, I guess, go do something else. But the thousands of years of human history, we can see that that is replete with people doing it their own way, and it never really works very well. It sometimes works for you know a few generations here and there, but it doesn't work long term. So again, my goal is helping you be discerning, be against the world, but for the sake of it, and to not just retreat and hide away from the world, and also not just you know take all the world's delicacies, but um, challenge the world, bring scripture to bear on those who are around you. So we're going to be looking at a video um, first. Yes. Oh, by the way, uh, I've not posted a lot lately. Uh, I've had a few things in the can, as they say. It just kind of comes out. It's an old film term because um, I used to film on, you know, film on film. I'm not filming on film. It's my birthday. This is my oldest daughter. She drew me, even made a card, cardstock out of paper. So she glues it. She's very articulate. She loves to read and write. And it is also artistic. It's a very strange combination, kind of. Because when I was a kid, I hated... Well, I liked to draw and, and all the rest. Um, being artsy and whatnot. But I like to read it all. I hated math. My second daughter, she's nine. She likes uh, math, but she doesn't really like to read. It's kind of funny. But they're both very smart. And definitely in different ways. Their own personalities and all that. But... This is like a deer, a squirrel, and a rabbit. I think it's Bambi. Yeah, they're Bambi. But you can see it's just, it's very detailed. Um, it's one of those lovely things about being a father. To daddy, I wish you to have a great birthday, and I hope you enjoy your carrot cake and hiking. Love her name. I'm not gonna share her name, I don't know. If you wanna, if you wanna ask me, I'll let you know, but I'm not gonna put it on the video. This is my youngest. She. This is another one. She's three. We got three girls and a boy. Uh, you can probably see her name on that one. <laughs> uh, we got a bunch of stickers. Trader Joe's. Of course, we love Trader Joe's. And there's a bunch of other stickers as well. Uh, mostly Trader Joe's stickers. Thanksgiving. My birthday's in August, though. But, you know, who doesn't like Thanksgiving food? Even in August. Dark chocolate peanut butter cups. They're the best. I have a few, one or two viewers that... Uh, Beg to differ, and that's okay. We can we can disagree, agree to disagree, as they say. Um, and then this is from my second second daughter. Um, it's happy birthday. It's hard to kind of tell with the light there, the auto balance. It says, "I hope you have a good birth." And then day, the hot dog and the tomato and the fries are D A Y. And then there's some fries here and a burger. I'm a big burger fries guy myself. And then she cut out these, which is pretty great. Uh, ketchup and mustard. They're partying. My son, I don't know what happened. He didn't make me a car, but that's okay. I still love it. My wife gave me a car, but I won't show you that. Because she didn't actually make it. So it's like, eh. No, just kidding. 
Still love you, babe. <laughs> so I just want to share that briefly. Um, you probably didn't click on this because you want to see my cards, although they're fun. If you don't have children, have children. Get married and have kids. They really are amazing. They really change you. Um, they give you a new, fresh look on life, and it's hard. It's so hard. No one ever says it's easy, right? And we all think, like, ah, this is easy. Marriage is easy. Um, getting, getting, Having kids, this is easy. Having a job, getting up, doing hard things, that's easy. <laughs> but we're all, like, believing that it's easy, but it's not easy. No one ever says it's easy. Uh, I mean, in this world, Jesus says you'll have trouble. But fear not, I'll have, I've overcome the world. And uh, that goes from, you know, showing up late because you spilled your coffee and you've got this and that and your car broke down and your boss got upset at you versus your kid is just dis disobeying all, the, all, all over the place or your neighbor is a total jerk and is, you know, doing stuff to your house at night or you're arguing with your wife or whatever, right? <laughs> you've got problems uh, or you're being persecuted, you're being arrested because you're preaching the gospel or, you know, your people are at work or forcing you to do things you don't want to do or comply and have speech codes and hate speech violations and in this world we'll have trouble but fear not we'll have overcome the world the lord jesus says so on to the video uh, we're going to be looking at briefly this is from woke preacher clips uh pretty fun he's he they i don't know who it is maybe it's a lady uh gal sh whoever it is uh, just puts up the most fun and interesting clips from Christians, so-called, mostly Christians. I think they're Christians. Um, but they've completely hook, line, and sinker swallowed the full bait of the secularist culture. The leftist paradigm culture, the culture of post-modernity, uh, uh, modern, you know, all truth. There is no absolute truth, your truth, my truth, standpoint epistemology, meaning I have my truth in this view, I can look at it this way, you can look at something different. That's why we can even see two plus two is now, quote unquote, racist. Uh, just such a bad, oh, just gets me so, oh, so upset. And uh, so this is from a video called, Is Jen Hatmaker Describing Be the Bridge or a POW Camp? This is interesting. So we're going to listen to this um, kind of on faster because I don't want to spend all day on it. It's just going to be 1.25, okay? If we are genuinely seeking to learn, to listen, to be exposed um, to a completely different experience, we don't have to look far. And so I, we don't have to put the burden of education on every Black friend we have on every neighbor we have it is it's an unfair burden um to say you educate me mm -hmm. um because we have eyes we have ears we can read we learned to read in kindergarten um if we want to know there are so many leaders that we can just sit quietly and learn from i have the i have a friend named latasha morrison and she runs an incredible organization called be the bridge and it's a racial reconciliation well really movement it's 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 a really incredible organization but Part of its um, work is it has an online private Facebook. Okay. Okay. We made it through a minute. Uh, first of all, this guy looks bored to tears. He's like, what is this lady even talking about? Why is, this she, why is she even talking? Who is this again? Uh, I know Jen Hetmager is a name. I have no idea who this guy is. Apparently he's famous. In another part of the clip or this interview, he says something about being... Um, <laughs> He's like, I'll tell you the same thing I told Oprah. It's like, like Oprah, Oprah? Like, did you just name drop Oprah? <sighs> I think he'd had something to do with The Bachelor. I don't even know. I really seriously don't know who this guy is. Uh, but you know what? He doesn't know who I am. So there you go. We're twins. But Jen Hatmaker used to be a Christian. I don't even think she's a Christian anymore um, or professing or anything. I don't, I don't, I have no idea. But saying something about, you know, She's got a friend and this and that and spaces. And there's a few things that you want to keep in mind. And I want you to, to um, keep your ears open. And this is going to be a little bit more of a learning. Learning. <laughs> um, if you want to learn, you don't have to. But that's the goal. Because there's people out there constantly talking.
And they have a worldview. Everybody has a worldview, right? Everybody has a Jesus as well. Who Jesus is? Is it the Jesus of scripture? The Jesus kind of of scripture? Is it Jesus of Islam or Mormonism? Is it the Jesus of secularism where it's just, you know, he was a really great guy, but he was misunderstood. He wasn't God. Or is he kind of a fictional guy? Everybody has a Jesus. Everybody. And further than that, everybody has a worldview. And that worldview is based on their Jesus and their view of Jesus. Is he the son of God? Is he a savior? Or is he just, you know, a moral teacher? Is he just an example? What is, who is Jesus? Well, Hatmaker here has, has pretty much renounced her Christianity, as far as I know. I think so. Um, but she will use, and many other people will use these words. They'll use words like spaces and experience and learned and education. And you need to, I need to be educated. And uh, white people, quote unquote, need to sit down and listen, hearing, having dialogue and so on. This is happening in the church at large, actual conservative churches, uh, many denominations in, of course, media and publications and, and the culture in general. But the funny thing is there's always this like, it's super lopsided. There's never like a, oh, let's have a conversation, really. They don't mean that. They mean you, the patriarchy, you know, and usually they always link it with men, which God has set up male headship over female within the marriage and even within the church, and the enemy hates that. So the culture wants to subvert that. They also want to subvert who men, who men are and who women are, right? Make men wussies and, and weaklings. I'll use, I could use other words. I'm not going to. And rise up women, you know, as if a woman being like a man and working and doing all these things and being the breadwinner and all that, as if a woman being like a man is more feminine. But that's ludicrous. That's nonsense. That's the lie of feminism. And we're now in the third wave, as it were, of feminism. Uh, there were the first wave, which was probably helpful with women getting the right to vote and other such things. I would say it was good, right? Because women are created in God's image too. They are equal image bearers of the Lord. That being said, that then went into the second wave with you know, abortion on demand and all the rest. And now here we are. But what they really want is just, you know, black people, so-called, and white people, so-called. I hate those terms because this ain't white and this guy's not black. We're all some sort of brown. So is she. She's kind of a peach colored. Nobody's the colors that they say. And what happened to red and yellow? We don't talk about those anymore because those are, you know, the R word. It's ludicrous and it's stupid. And if we would just see people as image bearers of God in the church, other people as people, because biologically we're all the same, right? You, There is no different race. There is one race. God created and there is one race from that, period. There isn't multiple races. That is a Darwinian vestigial thing that is long since should have died and is kind of dying off. But that is the stem of racism. That's why racism exists because of Darwin, because of uh, um, Mao and Hitler and, and Stalin and all these other people that believed Darwinist, Darwin, Darwinist thought, materialistic evolution. Now, most materialistic evolutionists these days aren't avid racists, but they were just a few few decades ago. And I'm sure many of them are deep down. Um, I'm not going to name names because I don't know the heart. But the point is, evolution in and of itself says there are different branches, right? And and this race over here in, in, in Asia evolved this way. And this race in Africa and this race in Europe and this race and this and that. And they spread off and this and that. And all these different groups and further advanced than others. And I mean, there's papers and other research saying, you know, Asians are the most highly evolved because they have the least amount of hair. They're the most sophisticated and so on. Of course, no, you know, white people are quote unquote, the most evolved or European or no Africans are the most evolved and this and this and this. Um, I mean, this is sadly where a lot of the things get, you know, being three fifths of a person. And even a lot of the racism that was in some of the churches, some of the denominations up until, you know, 150, 200 years ago, believing lies about, you know, say the curse of Ham, that's in the Bible, and thinking that black people had the curse of Ham. Mormons taught this up until the 1970s, um, curse of Canaan and so on. But that's nothing that isn't in scripture. That isn't actually what's going on. Uh, it's amount of melanin. It's, it's, it's physical material that some people have more of and some people have less of. There's people that are albino that have none of it, right? But their parents may look, you know, European or African or whatever, but they have certain other traits, yet their skin is completely almost actually white, like because there's no melanin at all. 
Well, okay, but what does that mean? We we just have to. Well, we have to listen to all the albinos because they're the most you know oppressed class. They're the most you know whatever class. No, but that's what Hatmaker is saying here. She's saying, oh, I've got a friend, and uh, she's got this group. And let's just hear what she says about this group. Group um, made up of essentially white people wanting to learn, and then tons of people of color kind of working together toward that end. And she has a rule which I love, which is white people, when you're new to this community and you come in our private Facebook group, you are essentially forbidden to say anything. You can't make a post and you cannot even respond on somebody else's post for three months. How wicked is that? How evil is that? Like, I don't, how is, how is that not completely, totally prejudice, racist? Hateful, bigoted, narrow-minded. So she has this friend who's probably got more melanin. Has a you know, racial reconciliation group. Okay. I'm not sure where we're reconciling into what race. Or excuse me, what race. What time. That's the funny thing with racial reconciliation. When are we talking about exactly? Because like, say a couple, man and woman, gets married. And say they've married for 10 years. And the life and stress, and they, they go estranged, right? He, he bounces out. Men generally do that, sadly. Don't want to take responsibility. Sometimes women. She, she has the kids, two kids. He leaves, right? You know, whatever, however old the kids are. And he leaves, and he's just gone for a year, right? He's just out. And he comes back to her one day with flowers and chocolates or whatever and says, Hey, honey, I'm sorry. I for, please forgive me. I'm, 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 I'm such a broken person. I'm so messed up. I need you. Please help me. Please forgive me. Let's walk through together. They're being reconciled. Okay. And if she says, yes, I was waiting for you. <laughs> They're reconciled. 10 years marriage, right? They met 10 years marriage or however long, five years, 50 years, whatever. And they brought back together. That's reconciliation. I've been hearing this. I heard this in seminary, you know, racial reconciliation, reconciliation, racial reconciliation. Well, first of all, again, there's only one race and it's stupid and really sinful for Christians to say otherwise. For Christians to act as though we don't have the scripture, that there is literally one race. Now, if you want to go to, I hear, I think it was Vodi Bakum and said, fine, there's two races. One in Adam, those who are unrepentant sinners and those who are in Christ. But it has nothing to do with skin tone, nothing to do with where you're from, the food you eat, the language you speak, none of it, none of it. That is not in the scripture at all. Don't let anyone tell you it is. Don't let anyone teach that it is. You stand up, you who are watching, we're almost to 100. We need seven more people, seven more. Share, share, share. Um, like and subscribe. Right here. Um, don't let anybody tell you that. In your church, you're te they're teaching some you know, new resource. You work for a Christian organization, a ministry, something like that. You go to a Christian school or even just your school in general. There is literally one race. Or again, if you want to be specific, fine. Those who believe who are in Christ and those who reject, who are still in Adam. Because Jesus is what? The second Adam. That's why we need a historical Adam. That's why we have a historical Eve and so on. Because if we don't have historical Adam and Eve, we don't have a historical second Adam. We don't have historical sin. Therefore, what are we doing? What's going on? Where did all this brokenness come from? But she says here in her Facebook post, in her friend Facebook group, that you can't talk. For three months. And I think it's good, she says, Hatmaker says. Like, really? You just got to sit down and listen. Listen to what exactly? What exactly are we supposed to be learning here? That my life is hard because I've got dark skin. Because I'm black or African American. Or, you know, say these people aren't from Africa. They're from Cuba, right? Or from Haiti. Or from, I mean, I have a friend. He's from Haiti. He's not African-American. He was born in Miami, but he's not from Africa. Now, he goes way back to Africa. Sure, his ancestors do, certainly do. My ancestors certainly go back to probably Germany, some Germanic tribe in north of Italy. But do I say I'm, you know, Germanic-American or English-American or Irish-American or German-American? or No. Why do we have these weird distinctions? It's, it's, it's nonsense other than to, to continue to sow division. Right? If you're going to be divided, you should be divided between the body of Christ, those who believe, doesn't matter what you look like, doesn't matter if you're male or female, all are one in Christ. Now, there is structure in the church. Men are called to be pastors and elders leading the church, just they are called to lead the family. 
But women have all sorts of roles and responsibilities as well. God made women a certain way for a certain purpose. God made men a certain way for a certain purpose. And to act like the other gender is sin. It just is. Again, I'm delivering the mail, not writing the mail. And so, for this to say, oh yeah, you have to just sit down and shut up for three months and just listen. What am I listening to? What are these people supposed to be listening to? To be educated on how hard life is? Yeah, okay. Do you understand my life's hard? Your life's hard? Who's watching this? I'm sure your life's hard. Is my life harder than your life? I don't know. If you want to share, maybe. You don't have to, but you can. Other people have it cush, have it easy. Other people have way worse. You want to talk about hard lives. Talk about the people, the billions of people around the planet that pretty much eat rice, to mo- rice most of the day, only a few times a day. That don't have shoes, that live in grass huts, that don't have any electricity or very, very, very few modern amenities. Yet they could, but because of corruption, public problems, governmental intrusion, government waste, and so on. This happens in Southeast Asia, all over Africa, South America, and so on. These governments, mainly the politicians and the politics involved, oppress the people that they have underneath. They're supposed to protect those people, but rather they enslave them in their own bondage and in their own poverty. You want to talk about privilege? Everybody in America is privileged, okay? Everybody. Some people more than others, but everybody is privileged in America more than anybody else because that's why people come here. That's why we have droves of people from all over the place coming from all over the place in all of our ways, mainly the southern border, sadly. You want to come here? We're a nation of immigrants. You just got to do it right. No big deal. Sign some paperwork, do this and that, take a test, where are you from, blah, 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 and assimilate. Now, you don't need to ignore your heritage. No, not at all. But... You're coming to this country because of the values that we have. Freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly, right to bear arms, so on and so forth. Those freedoms don't exist in Cuba. Those freedoms don't exist in North Korea, Venezuela, right? Even in places like Sweden or even in the UK in some instances, many instances. Nigeria, South Africa. I mean, South. you want to talk about segregation and oppression, look at South Africa. If you're curious and you're like, oh man, I don't know, man. I was liking this channel, but now you're just, you're just spouting nonsense. Go to uh, look up South Africa and how they are insanely segregated. They're like literally 60 years behind us as far as segregation goes. I mean, they've got walls up the yin-yang because it's so much crime in places like Durban and other big cities in South Africa, that it's it's unbelievable. And nobody talks about it, right? Because we want, to, whoever it is, and these people, uh, the guy, I don't even know his name, Ancho, I think it is, Emmanuel Ancho? Yeah, I don't know. Again, I don't know. I have no idea who he is. He looks bored to death, though. Uh, I hope you're not bored. But if you are, that's okay. You can turn it off, click on something else. But if you're still with me, Jen Hatmaker is just an accomplice. She's a useful idiot uh, in, in the pawn game of people dividing up the country. Okay, We have far more in common with each other as human beings living unto the Lord, especially if you're a Christian. No matter what you look like, no matter where you're from, no matter what language you even speak, if you're a slave of Christ, if you're in Christ... You have far more in common with the oligarchs and the power brokers and the elites who are very, 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 very few. Very few. Those who run, you know, big tech and media and politics and all the rest. Those are the people that are enslaved because we're ultimately, as I've said this before, we're not against them, Ephesians 6 tells us, but we're against principalities and powers and evil forces in the heavenly realm. That's Paul in Ephesians. Go check it out. Your job is to be a learner, a quiet learner, um, because she discovered early on in the community that white guilt, <laughs> like white shame is so prevalent and it derails every conversation because the white tears are immediately centered over whatever the real substance was of the discussion, right? And so I was like, Tasha, 
She's like, listen, that is the way we can finally, we need a three month window. She's like, it's like a magic space. We're having listened and learned for three months and been able to sort of internally process defensiveness um, and like shock in some cases and this jarring new reality. Um, she's just discovered that people are a little bit more ready to listen and to talk, which I always thought was really wise um, just to sort of set aside that, that, that initial response. Cause you said it earlier, people hear a word, trigger word, white people I'm yeah. talking about. That's it's like, well, my, my therapist taught me is that spend the first five minutes in conversation, assuming you're wrong. And that's essentially yeah. what it sounds. Okay. So again, First of all, she said, white, white people. It's like the H actually comes before the W. I'm not sure how that works, but I guess in this day and age, anything's possible. Um, but she's white. And then, oh, that's so white shame and white tears. White, te I'm not crying about anything. Are you crying about anything? White person? Are, I mean... Let's talk. Yeah, let's have friends. But it depends on where you live, right? If you have friends who look like you, newsflash, most people assimilate with other people who look like them and share the same lived experience. So it's not racist to do that if you have lighter skin versus medium skin or darker skin or extra dark skin or you're from this place or that place or eat this or that. Most people, I mean, I was at seminary and there were godly people and well, lo and behold, look at, there's all a bunch of, there's several Korean women over there and they're speaking Korean and they're women and they're Korean. Am I mad about that? How dare you? You need to have black and white friends. How dare you not include me in your Korean conversation? No, of course not. Why would I do that? That's stupid. I'm from California. I talk to several Californians. Do they look like me? Mostly. I had one friend who didn't. Cool. But we had a little bit more in common than somebody who's from Kentucky or Florida. Is that wrong? And if it's wrong, why is it wrong? Okay, I'm tired of this nonsense about you need to sit down and shut up and listen. What are you telling me other than nonsense? You're literally spewing nonsense. Other than nonsense, what exactly am I supposed to be learning? Or you're just causing chaos because you just think that's going to be helpful. Because somehow you want to tear down everything and somehow everything else is new things that are going to be built up against it, uh, uh, out of it. Really? Further still, he says what? What does he say? Assuming you're wrong. My therapist, right? And this is what secular people do. I'm assuming this guy's not even a professing believer. Uh, he might be. I don't. doesn't matter. But he's got a therapist, right? Now, normal people who are Jesus followers have a pastor, right? Or, or a mentor or somebody who they're reading, a theologian or somebody like that. But the world sees and knows the world is screwed up. The world is caused, cursed by sin. But they don't want to admit that, right? It's just all psychological. It's all a problem and so on. He says, my therapist. Now, I spend the first five minutes assuming you're wrong. Now, I guess this is his therapist. Who knows what his therapist looks like. Uh, telling him that the, he's wrong. I guess. I assume. Or is he telling... This guy, Emmanuel, whatever, however you say his last name. That you, Emmanuel, should tell other people that they're wrong. First of all, it doesn't ever really go very well when you just immediately tell someone that they're wrong or you immediately tell someone that they should think that they're wrong or stopping them and say, hey, why don't you spend the first five minutes assume that you're wrong? Why don't you just do that? And okay, fine, if we're going to do that. Does that apply to both him and Hatmaker? What if they're wrong? But they're not thinking about that because they're sitting on their high horse, aren't they? Their high horse of wokey wokeness and, and, and epistemology that is nothing but from their own point of view. Truth that is not actual truth at all. It's completely relative. It's your own experience. Oh, now we're the victims and we're this and now we're going to oppress you. We're seeing this all the time now especially with the rainbow people, right? 20 years ago, it was an alternative lifestyle. No, we just want to be treated equally, blah, 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 blah. We just want to be able to get married, 2015, a burger fell. Okay, great. Now you want to be married. Now they're literally forcing people to accept them, uh, speak and change language, change English. You know, there was that men's chorus, San Francisco men's chorus saying, we're after your children. We're going to come take your children. We knew this all along. I mean, people who are paying attention, you probably knew this too. That it never, it never stops, right? It's, oh, we just want to be accepted. Do you? Is that all? Really?
And this is how cultural revolutions continue to move forward. When good people and common sense people do nothing, the evil continues to spread. Like a wildfire, if you don't put it out, when it's small, or call it out at minimum, it will spread. And that's what this is. And that's what I hope to do here. That's why I'm talking about this in hopes to say, look at this. Oppression. Don't sit down in this group and listen for three months. You don't get to say anything. You now just have to listen because you're the oppressor because of your skin tone. Listen to that. How racist is that? That you're lo- that this person is looking at this person and saying, you're the oppressor because of your skin tone. So should, but we can't say, oh, because of your skin tone, you're a thief or you're a robber or you're a murderer or you're a this or you're a that. You're going to go to jail because of your skin tone. That's racist. Ah, I'm triggered. But it's totally fine to tell that the other way around or in a different way, right? And other people have said, why not to swap out white, 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 white people with Japanese people or Mexicans? or Brazilians, or French, or whatever, right? Well, all those people are white, right? It used to be, 100 years ago, it was like only English people, right, were white. And Irish people, Italians, they were having, they were uh, persecuted, they were made fun of. That's why we have, you know, Little Italy, we have Germantown, we have um, uh, Chinatown, and so on and so forth. All these places, but now, even Jewish people, who were super oppressed, who were not seen at all, especially by Hitler's own mission and his own classification of materialistic evolution and Darwinism. He definitely did not think that they were even close to fully human. That's Hitler, right? That's Hitler. Not me. But now, somebody like a Ben Shapiro's white. Ben Shapiro's Jewish. No, he's actually both physically Jewish as far as his heritage goes, but he's also actually religiously Jewish. But you can also be physically Jewish as your heritage and be a Christian or a Buddhist or a Muslim or whatever, right? But it's just a, it's just a, it's a sea of nonsense. Nothing but the tide bouncing and moving around. And these people, Hatmaker and this Emmanuel guy, are in their own boats and just being tossed in, to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You have to be anchored in Christ. You must be anchored in Christ. Christ must be that for you. And he must be, he should have been for these two people. And there is still hope for both Emmanuel and Hatmaker here. There is still hope for these people because what they're doing will damn them. It's not going to bring any salvation. Nothing lasting. Even if it lasts a thousand years, which it won't. But even if it does, it will eventually fade. But you're dead a lot longer than a thousand years. I gotta stop. And we only made it two and a half minutes in. I'm not listening anymore to this nonsense. It's so bad. Um, The point is, these people, these people, yes, I'm using that word, see the world in a completely different way. They think truth is relative. They think now the oppressor should be oppressed and the oppressed should be the oppressor. They don't care about justice. They don't care about equality. They don't even really care about equity, which are not the same thing as equity and equality. Not the same thing. They don't care about any of it. They just want power. They want sheer, brute power. They're looking out for their own interests. But what does Jesus say? He says, don't look out for your own interests, but look out for the interests of others, right? The golden rule, which is a common just kind of general rule. But it's funny, we never have to be told to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think, right? We have to always think of ourselves as less. But that goes against completely everything that the world says. The world says, oh, more self-esteem. Oh, poor you. You're just, no, 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 no. Listen, you and me think of ourselves way more than we should. We have to be told by Christ himself and through the Spirit to think of yourself as less. And until you think of yourself as less and Christ as most and other people as image bearers of the Lord, Until you actually get there, you're never actually going to come to full forgiveness and full redemption in Christ. You might have some sort of superficial thing, go to church and say the Bible verses and whatever. But you're not going to have really true washing and regeneration through the Spirit. Until you come and understand how much of a sinner you are and how much more you need Christ, it's not going to work. It's not going to matter. So racial reconciliation, listening, learning, it's a never-ending hamster wheel. It's a never-ending treadmill of just constantly going and going and going. 
Now, do they actually say that? No, but the race hustlers and those that are even you know bigger like Al Sharpton and others who have been doing this for years and years and years, they want to keep people down because when you have a boogeyman, you can fight at that boogeyman and distract people. Meanwhile, you're padding your pockets with tens of, tens of thousands of dollars each and every month from, you know, grievances and people giving you money and, oh, help the cause, help this, like, you know, the BLM supporters, the trained Marxists, quote unquote, who now have, you know, each of them have more than one house, really nice houses and living in a lap of luxury. But, you know, who cares really about that at the end of the day? Because their worldview is not Christ at all. It is completely anti-Christ. And Hatmaker and Emmanuel are the same. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and go ahead and you can check out Woke Preacher Clips uh, I subscribe to him, they, her, I don't know how many people it is, but uh, it's a good, it's a good resource for sure. Till next time, I'm helping you be against the world for the sake of the world. Take care.